Well, this Yankees game clearly dealing with some rain now in Tampa. Tarp is on the field, bottom of the fifth inning. Yankees an 8-2 lead, and it is now a final rather than sit through a rain delay here in spring training. It is an official game and a Yankee win, and you know, most of the Yankees able to get in their work. Ryan Rucco, Meredith Morakovic, David Cohn with you. Uh, Meredith, you know, before we get out of here after th this final, we get to get some notes uh, from you. And we heard Aaron Boone speak glowingly about Jordan Montgomery and the uptick in velocity thus far this spring. Obviously, his role becomes even more important with what's happened with the Yankees starting staff. And it feels like people feel pretty good about him thus far. Uh, it's obviously early, but so far in spring extremely comfortable with what they've seen from Jordan Montgomery so far and Jordan Montgomery himself is very confident in the way he's been throwing the ball I spoke to him a little bit and he said he actually overhauled the way he trained this offseason and ironically Eric Cressy who's now the director of player health and performance is a guy that Montgomery reached out to prior to even being hired by the Yankees wow. he said people within his family and people that he knew had urged him for years to try something different go to somebody and get a program and for whatever reason this year coming off the Tommy John he wanted to make sure he was in the best shape to succeed on the mound so he went there got a couple programs and he said from what he had been doing in college it's a total 180 he's now doing a lot more squats deadlifts that type of thing and he's doing his throwing program in the lifting so he doesn't have to do an additional uh, strength program as far as his arm is concerned and he just feels so much stronger on the mound he thinks that's a big reason why you're seeing that uptick of velocity so early in between 92 and 94 miles an hour and David I'm sure you can talk about this he said it changes a little bit the way he approaches pitching he now feels confident in that fastball he's able to be more aggressive attack a little bit more he said before he was so curve heavy when that wasn't working and guys were sitting on that he sometimes scratched his head and wondered what he was going to do out there now that he feels as though he can throw that fastball and get some bad swings off of that he feels as though he's in a little bit of a better position yeah I agree and I think you know we, we talked about you know the hiring of Matt Blake Matt Blake and Eric Cressy had a relationship in the past too as uh, Matt Blake used to be with them as well so there there's a synergy there that really works and we're seeing more and more pitchers train for velocity whether it's weighted balls or different types of power exercises that were kind of discouraged in the past during my day and, and now are really encouraged and we see it across the league we've seen it with, with several pitchers that gain that velocity and it's not unheard of anymore and I, I certainly applaud Jordan Montgomery for going that route because it really can pay off it makes all of your secondary pitches that much better if you could keep them honest with a little extra velocity on your top end and he can certainly play a big role in the rotation you heard Aaron Boone talk a little bit about it now the question will be how will you manage the innings will they pull him back at some point in time but as it stands right now with the injuries that they've sustained to the rotation and losing Luis Severino for the year James Paxton out for a couple of months he looks as though he is going to play a big role and Ryan I know what you're thinking. Did he still have to pay for those programs? Yeah. Jordan Montgomery told me right before Christmas, Cressy reached out to him and said, Merry Christmas early in a text <laughs> message. You no longer have to pay for him. No word on whether he refunded him the money, money retroactively, but there were a couple other Yankees working out down there getting programs prior to the hire and a couple other guys from other teams. And they were like, what's going on here? Now I still have to pay for mine, but you get yours for free. That's not right. So it all worked out, it seems like, so far for Jordan Montgomery. I hope that he has a successful season and is able to stay healthy throughout yeah, it. Yeah, and strong reviews thus far for the Yankees' new performance team. Meredith on the pitching side of things obviously the the other big question will end up being now that Montgomery somewhat obviously slots into number four what happens with that fifth starter slot in the aftermath of Luis Severino's injury you know what's your early gauge for you know who are the most legitimate contenders for that position well I think a lot of fans would love to see a guy like Davey Garcia break camp with the team I don't think that that is necessarily going to happen he is a guy that the Yankees believe overall could use a little bit more seasoning in the minors you see Michael King he has great control somebody that the Yankees are very high on right now and we've seen Luis Sessa and Jonathan Loisaga over the last two years the biggest question with Loisaga and David we've gone back and forth on this so many times can he stay healthy as a starter or is he better suited due to his build as a guy that comes out of the bullpen we've seen him in small doses 
be dynamic on the mound, but you don't know if he can stretch that throughout the course of an entire game. So, Ryan, to answer your question, I think they're going to get a little creative in yeah. the way that they do it. I think you are going to see maybe a Luis Sessa who came in training as a starter, getting stretched out as a starter. It's funny, if you remember a couple years ago, it seemed as though that was always Adam Warren's role. Come in as a starter, we'll see where you <laughs> fit, and you probably will wind up in the bullpen. Well, now with this situation, you may see a guy like Luis Sessa throwing some extra innings perhaps Loisega piggybacking off of that maybe even see Chad Green as an opener a little bit more than had been planned coming into the season because of those injuries the one luxury that the Yankees do have you look at the schedule in April there are off days it allows them to get a little bit creative and perhaps go a different direction with maybe not a traditional fifth starter uh, the one thing yes they won't be Luis Severino but the Yankees do have options and they do have guys that they think can Tribute. How about uh, Miguel Andujar, Meredith? You know, we, we talked a lot about his work in left field, made his debut there. This is the first time he's played a position outside of third base in a pro game at any point in his career, and it happened to be in left field. We heard Aaron Boone talk about it. You know, what has been your read thus far on Miguel's comfort level with the outfield and the feedback he's been getting? It's funny, I asked him on a scale of one to 10, how comfortable are you being out there in the outfield right now? And he looked at me and he said, well, this is the first time out there. I'll let you know after the game. But from everything he's done, from working with different outfielders, working with Reggie Willits, he feels as though he's adapting pretty well. And I said, do you ever play at any level? He had to go back to maybe, maybe, 11 or 12 mm -hmm. when he was 11 or 12 he might have played in the outfield but he wasn't a hundred percent certain on that but he's doing his due diligence and, and really doing the right thing and going to other guys on the team he said he's spoken in length with John Carlos Stanton on how he approaches left field he's talked to Aaron Judge he's talked to the outfielders and really he has got together with Reggie Willits a lot to make sure that he is in the right position he said once the game starts he thinks that the instincts are just gonna take over but there are certain intricacies to playing out there that you do need some reps to see exactly how you handle certain situations uh, you saw him throughout spring so far out in the outfield working a lot and kind of just seeing how the ball comes off the bat so the angles the adjustments there that could take some time but overall he's an extremely athletic guy and willing more than anything else saying time and time again he wants to be a part of this roster he thinks he can contribute and however he thinks the Yankees see him fitting in that's good with him whether that be a little bit at third a little bit at DH, maybe even first base and left field. He's down to do it, Ryan. Meredith, awesome insights and stories. We'll all be back tomorrow. We're going to be back here for a 1 o'clock game tomorrow afternoon as this one ends in five innings, 8, 6, and 1. The totals for the Yankees, 2, 3, and 2 for the Nationals. Zach Britton gets the win. Masahiro Tanaka's spring debut as he goes two innings. And DJ LeMahieu, a ribby double that put the Yankees in front one hour and 57 minutes before the rain short stoppage. That'll do it for